One of the central promises of the um, 2030 Agenda for Development is the Leave No One Behind programming commitment. But we have also decided to start with the further behind first. We'll need to be able to know who is left behind. How far behind are they? How do you know that they are behind? Uh, and also, can you prove that they are behind? And the way to do that is to ensure that we have the um, reliable evidence. So all of these questions involve automatically having data available. So uh, gender data is critical to demonstrate that most of the people behind are women. Not only in terms of the numbers, but in terms of their special needs, in terms of their status, in terms of their priorities, in terms of their fundamental human rights. The inception of uh, the Women Count program came into perspective because of, of the SDGs and the requirements of the delivery of SDG Five, which is on gender equality. We knew, for instance, that there were education gap between men and women. We knew that it was, there was a digital gap between men and women and boys and girls, but we didn't know how deep. And it was defined along three outcome areas. One, enabling environment, including improving the financial and coordination mechanisms and policy framework. The second one is to improve the quality and increase data production for gender statistics. The third one, to increase dissemination, access and use of gender data. Uganda was able to use evidence from the assessment to develop interventions along those three outcome areas. One of our biggest successes in this project was our realization that our data capture tool had gaps. That helped us to improve to meet the data demands of uh, whoever required the data. We were able to articulate the issues of women count, issues of women and girls during our planning processes. That's why. And we use this tool for lobbying for farms. There have been strong coordination structures for gender statistics developed in the country. Uh, notably, the Gender Statistics Advisory Group. We have a Gender Statistics Clinical Working Group. And there has been regular consultation, validation, and dissemination meetings and updates on the various gender statistics activities over the period. The other opportunity or benefit was the increased engagement with the key government ministries, departments and agencies. In the engagement, there has been strengthened collaboration and coordination within the gender statistics production and use. Gender and equity perspectives and gender data requirements have been integrated in the National Development Plan 3, in the United Nations Sustainable Development uh, Cooperation Framework. It improved on the quality of our data collection. Many MDAs, many civil society and local government staff benefited from the training and were able to acquire skills and today are still applying those skills in the development planning process, in the reporting framework and also advocacy uh, to attract resources. Right now as we talk we have a national web portal for gender statistics that is managed by the Uganda Bureau of Statistics. We interacted with gender experts from Makerere University School of um, Women and Gender Studies. And so through those networks, we were able to even make our gender analysis skills even better, such that whatever we are putting out, 
is more credible actually. In the process, we did not just benefit others, we also benefited. Uh, one of the lessons is that uh, continuous advocacy on the production and use of gender statistics is critical to sustain the sustainability of uh, the production and use of gender statistics. And where this local government is committed to work in the UN, especially in the implementation of programs that are embedded under the 18 uh, national program of NDP3. Moving forward, we are also harmonizing further and standardizing data collection, analysis, packaging and dissemination. We're talking about leaving no one behind. We're talking about reaching the fathers behind first. And if we want to be able to do that, then it is important that we can uh, utilize the tools um, and the mechanisms available to us. Our hope is that the cooperation and partnership will be strengthened even further, that we shall scale higher heights, and that by the end of the phase two, the country will be able to sustainably produce gender responsive statistics, disseminate and use new statistics for evidence policy making and formulation.